Hello everyone, I am Dheeraj, a deep learning software engineer at NVIDIA and welcome to today's session on Intuit Inference. In this session, we demonstrate an end-to-end -end workflow for deploying QAT models using ONNX TensorRT. This talk is divided into three parts. In the first part of the talk, I will discuss basics of quantization and how TensorRT supports quantized networks through various fusions. In the second part, we will talk about the quantization toolkit for TensorFlow that is open sourced and TensorRT's deployment via ONNX. In the end, we will see an example and case study for a ResNet50 QAT model. In this talk, we focus on models that are trained using TensorFlow 2.0 framework. Let's look into deep neural networks quantization. What is quantization? Quantization is the process of converting continuous values into a discrete set of values using linear or nonlinear scaling techniques. Generally, higher precision is necessary during training for fine grained weight updates, but it's not required for inference and sometimes may hinder the deployment of AI models in real time. On the other hand, intent inference results in lower latency and lower memory footprint. Hence, there is a clear benefit in converting SP32 models into intent. However, sometimes there can be a trade-off to accuracy. There are different quantization schemes by which floating point tensors can be converted into lower precision. One standard way to express a real value in terms of quantized value Q is R equals to S times Q minus Z, where S and Z are scale and zero points. These scale and zero points are together referred to as quantization parameters or Q params. Q params can be determined either via post-training quantization or PTQ and a quantization aware training or QAT. Let's discuss PTQ and QAT in detail. In PTQ, we start with a pre-trained model and run it on a calibration data set, which can be a subset of training or validation data. We calculate the dynamic ranges of weights and activations, which are then used to compute quantization parameters or Q params. We then quantize the network using Q params and perform inference. Alternatively, in QAT, we start with a pre-trained model and introduce quantize and dequantize nodes at desired layers. QDK nodes is a single operation which performs FP32 to intake and intake to FP32 conversion, thereby simulating the quantization process that occurs during inference. We fine-tune this quantized model for a few number of epochs and then store the final Q params. The goal is to learn the Q params or model parameters which can help to reduce the accuracy drop between the quantized model and the pre-trained model. One of the ways to perform QAT is to use TFMod toolkit released by Google. This toolkit implements TF quantization recipe designed for TensorFlow Lite. In this toolkit, quantization is performed using fake quant with min max uh, vars op, which performs asymmetric quantization. On the other hand, at NVIDIA, we have released a separate toolkit built on top of TFMod. This offers features such as quantizing layers by using both layer name and layer class as attributes. We also support pattern-based quantization. And the quantization is performed using quantize and dequantize V2R, which is a symmetric quantization variant. To get the best performance for a QAT model on a GPU using ONNX Tensor RT, we, use, we recommend using NVIDIA TF2 quantization toolkit. Here is a quick difference between the NVIDIA's quantization toolkit and TFMod. On the left, on the NVIDIA's quantization toolkit, we see the quantization nodes being placed at the inputs of the way, uh, inputs of the convolution and weights of the convolution operator. On the right, uh, using TFMod toolkit, we see that the quantization nodes are placed at the weights and the outputs of convolution layer. In this slide, we see 
how we place QDQ nodes according to Tensorati's recommendation, which is implemented by the quantization toolkit. For weighted layers such as convolution or tens, we place QDQ nodes at the inputs and weights of the particular layer. And for non-weighted layers such as concat and pooling, we add QDQ nodes at all the particular inputs. For residual add, we see that uh, the QDQ nodes are being placed on the residual branch of the network. Now let's look into how we can deploy a model that's trained using NVIDIA TF2 quantization toolkit with ONNX Tensorati. The workflow consists of taking a pre-trained TensorFlow 2.0 model and quantizing it with our NVIDIA toolkit. We fine-tune it for a small number of epochs to simulate the quantization process that occurs during inference and stores the quantized model. We then convert this model into ONNX using TF2 ONNX converter. Once the ONNX graph is generated, we generate Tensorati engine out of it using Tensorati APIs. In this slide, we see how easy it is to perform quantization event training using NVIDIA toolkit by introducing just four lines of code. We load the pre-trained checkpoint of the model and use the quantize model function from the toolkit which transforms the model and introduces QDQ nodes. We then perform fine tuning of the model for a few epochs and save the final model. Once the fine tuning is completed, we convert the fine tuned model into ONNX using TF2 ONNX converter. TF2 ONNX is a standard way to convert TensorFlow models into ONNX representations. It has conversion support for many standard deep learning operators. We have also added support for converting quantized uh, quantization operators. A quantization operator uh, in TensorFlow is represented by using quantize and dequantize API, which is then converted into two separate ops, uh, which are named as quantize linear and dequantize linear in ONNX. Once we have the ONNX graph, we, we use the ONNX parser in Tensorati, which parses the ONNX model and converts it into an optimized Tensorati engine. The QDQ optimizations and fusions are performed internally, which are then used to build a Tensorati engine. Now, let's look into some accuracy and latency results for recent models. As for the accuracy results, we can see that there is little to no difference between the baseline FP32 and the QAT models across different variants of ResNet. In general, ResNets are pretty stable for quantization, which is why the gap between PTQ and QAT is very less. Efficient nets are a good example where QAT preserves accuracy better than PTQ. From the latency aspect, we can see that PTQ and QAT has similar times and introduce more than 10x speed up compared to their FP32 counterparts. PTQ models can sometimes be a bit faster than QAT models since PTQ algorithm only quantizes layers which result in faster model inference, whereas QAT model performance depends on the placement of QDQ nodes and their fusions. So, to summarize, the quantization aware training provides an alternative to deploy deep neural networks in lower precision. QAT models might be less prone to accuracy drop during inference compared to PTQ models due to model parameters fine tuning. We demonstrated an end to end QAT workflow from TensorFlow to TensorAti deployment via ONNX. TF2 ONNX enables converting TensorFlow models into ONNX graphs, which is then optimized by TensorAti. And finally, our experiments with ResNet models showed that intake accuracy is on par with FP32 baseline accuracy and that the QAT latency is on par with PTQ. Thank you for attending this session.